All right, guys. Thanks for uh, joining us. We are back for game number two between Xeon and Lawn Gnome. Let's go ahead and start up game two. I'm anxious to see how this set plays out. All right, guys. Here we are in the uh, on Entombed Valley, it looks like. This was Gnome's pick for losing game one. Uh, Scorb, who do we have playing here? Yeah, in the bottom right, we actually have Gnome, the green Protoss again. Uh, down a game to the guy at the top left, executed his four gate pretty well. It's the orange Protoss, Payback Connery. <laughs> yep, that is Zeon in the top left corner. Um, he did take game number one with a well-executed four gate, absolutely. Uh, well-timed, well-executed. Um, really like uh, how, how he pulled it off. Um, now, for me, if I'm playing Zeon, my pick would have been a map similar to Entomb that's a little bit bigger. Um, so maybe to me this tells me that Londom wants to play a macro game a little more and not get more gated. Um, so maybe that's the thinking there. I don't know. Um, well, that's certainly one way to The problem with that thinking, though, is the way that 48 functions. Well, it will take a longer time for a probe to get across the map. Distance doesn't really matter in PvP because you have warpin. So your units don't have to travel across the map. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. That's a good point. Um, yeah, so, you know, who knows what Londom's thinking on, on this map, um, on Entombed. They're cross-spawn. I don't know if they know that or not. Um... They, no one scouted yet, and I don't think this is a cross spawn only map, so I'm very curious to see um, when they're going to find each other. I think they're... They are going to... Now, Xeon, I think, is going to find him right away on the first scout, going cross spawn to default, He's and going I think across. Lawn Gnome is going to take the long way and get to him second. Yeah, um, this is one of those maps where it varies between tournaments. Um, there's a lot of times there's no horizontal, and there is vertical. Um, it's usually vertical and cross. But, I mean, yeah, it never horizontal, so. I mean, right. Lawn Gnome is still scouting, okay. It's not anything too atrocious or unheard of on this map. Right, exactly. Now, you know, Lawn Gnome, um, Lawn Gnome is, is, is getting a little bit out ahead every time on Xeon with his, his gates and his, his cyber core. But uh, even still, now, God, God, Xeon tucks that pro boy into the corner of Lawn Gnome's main. What, what, Lawn Gnome did see it. I saw a bunch of clicks on his vision as far as towards that side. Um, not sure if he's sending a probe over there, but I definitely saw him click in that direction, so I'm not now, sure. Now, for me, he did this oh, the dude. first game, too, and he's doing it again the second game. If I am Lawn Gnome, I, I honestly, I waste a probe and throw it to follow that one, because I, I know there's a good chance a proxy's gonna go down somewhere. I want it to be on top of it. He's definitely throwing a zealot out there. That's what I saw the clicks for. The, the, the clicks were for the uh, the rally on the uh, get. Yeah, there you go. Plant and that that, that I mean that, that's a great work. That pins that pins that probe right away. There's no proxy in his main. He can see that now. Zeon complaining about it. Fair. Disappointed. To be yeah, fair, I mean, sad. usually usually you throw a probe at it and it's like just get on my base, bro. But instead he's like, no, I'm gonna throw a zealot at it and get a quick little advantage. So now, very good now, work by now, what's happened here is that there's still no warp gate tech for Xeon. He still hasn't started it yet, and he's had the option for a while. The warp gate tech is about a quarter done already for Lawn Gnome. Mm -hmm. Definitely so not. I don't know. Um, Zeon, he is on Zeon's double cap as well, pretty hard. Um, he's yeah, got double he... gas going. He's got a Robo, so he's going with one gate Robo. Curious if he's going to go for an expand, a, ro a one gate expand off this with the Robo, or if he's going to go a three gate Robo and be aggressive. Either way, he's just now on supply blocked. Um, so right now, Rondo has actually started better in, in, in a couple different uh, regards here. Yeah. Um, he's actually getting a Robux facility of his own, so he also is going to three gate Robo. I'm not sure if that's what uh, Zeon's plan is, but... Yeah, I think money I think, to spend. Hey, yeah, he he. Oh, that's a Stargate. Ooh, He's gonna go yeah. for the one one one. Yeah, so to speak. Um, yes, yeah, so I think I think maybe uh, maybe with some phoenixes to pick up here and then just uh, huh, interesting kind of fun build. Okay, uh, definitely definitely be a fun build. So uh, we'll, we'll see what his phoenix control looks like. So <laughs> that's true, but a lot of it's gonna do him no good without a warp gate. Um, this is uh. <laughs> Awfully bad that there's still no warp gate started, let alone finished six minutes. Um, yeah, warp gate. You know, man, he's Connery. He does what he has to. He's got the wrong side of the roof. I know it's different. He's got his pliers. He's got his tin foil. He'll be able to get out of the situation. It's Connery, man. He's Connery. Not out yet. Oh, okay. All right. That's fair. Um. All right. So the three gate robo is done, and immortals and and Oz are on the way for a lawn gnome. Lawn gnome. Avoid ray. Making me look like an idiot. 
dead blocked here. Um, now starting his his uh, pylon a little later than he probably wanted to. Although what's nice about this is that he's able to with that last supply get the observer out the way he planned it. Right. So that's cool. Um, this observer is probably going to see this void ray marching across the map, and Zeon's actually moving out with just a handful of zealots and a couple of mortals. So because yeah, you can't wait much longer with no warp gate. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And he's not going to have any way to reinforce this. So as soon as Longnum holds this off, assuming that he does, this pressure is just going to be over. There's nothing yeah. else that he can really do. And, and he's he's got three centuries, so he can he force heal for a while because they've had energy for a long time. And now he's starting to warp in stalkers as well, so something else can shoot up. Now here we go. Now Gnome right now has vision. Gnome has yeah. vision right now. Yeah. But he only Definitely. sees the portals and the zealots. And at this point, if I'm Lawn Gnome, I'm actually scratching my head because I'm like, well, uh, this doesn't look right. Yeah. There's something else. And then it. there's the Void Ray. And, and <laughs> so sees, now he's picking on it right now. He sees that Void Ray. Um, at this point, he's looking okay. He's got another another uh, Immortal. There's no way Zeon can go up this ramp. Yeah. Well, of course, we're going to pick off a couple of Zealots. Uh, Zeon needs to back out. Again. Oh, and that Void Ray, yeah, he's trying to focus down the Immortals, doing an okay job, but I mean, still, you're not going to fight up the ramp with a lesser unit count and no way to reinforce. Yeah, Zeon at this point has got to take everything and go home. He keeps turning around! What? Yeah, Zeon, go home! Stop it! I mean, he's got another Void Ray on the way, but Void Rays are extremely... But now he, and he's already... But how long are you going to do without a single Void Ray? Now the other Void Ray is showing up immediately, so that's probably a little yeah, time. Uh, but look at the resources lost at. When you lose a Void Ray, that's a huge investment. So that's a big loss for him, and he's going to fall further behind. There's a big advantage in worker supply. Uh, maybe not a big one in worker supply, but a decent enough advantage in worker supply for London, but a bigger, big one in army supply as well. Um, at this point... When you are microing your army so bad to defend, you're, you may lose um, your supply caps, things like that. He's got a couple pylons now on the way, so he's keeping on top of it pretty well. And he's going to immediately go to expand behind this. I, I like that move. I, I think th you have two schools of thought here. One is expand. The other is proxy pylons and fucking take him down. Well, yeah, I mean, the only concern here is if Lonum moves across the map, just A moves, he might be able to kill him. I mean, four mortals against a couple with a couple of Void Rays that really aren't going to do that much damage to a decent amount of Stalkers and um, sentries that can, you know, force field away the Zealots or just Guardian Shield. So, and Wando is going to get his Observer picked off. Sorry to cut you off there. Yeah, so I mean, that is definitely... Uh, it's just, it's one of those things where indecision is actually going to probably hurt Gnome a little bit because Zeon's Nexus is faster. He's going to catch up in that Harvester count, so... Yeah, I, I, I think so. And the gap has already gotten smaller. At one point, he was like 10 behind. He's now... Close it to half that. He's now down only five. Yeah, and he's gonna keep catching up. He's got a couple of probes worth of time based on the um, the the time difference of the expansion. But God, while the armor supply is almost doubled your advantage, God, why won't you just go in there? I mean, obviously, again, like you said, this is the spot where you second guess, and if you second guess and delay, you yep. may be dead. But we're gonna see how yeah. this game plays out. Uh, I mean, Unknown is in a good position. There's a couple things that can happen when you're ahead. Either you can get more ahead by not killing your opponent and just macroing up or whatever but at the same time you give your opponent the chance to catch up because they can start cutting corners right and left like Xeon should not have felt comfortable taking that expansion no way no. that is a very risky expansion but Londome isn't going to punish that and Xeon is going to have a chance to uh, close the lead a little bit I, I just want to call everyone's attention to the 12 minute marker which we're just about 11.55 Warp Gate just finishing for Xeon Hey everyone, round of applause, golf clap. Um, yeah, so he is going to have Colossus out right about when his warp gate is finishing. Um, and he's got air, so I don't really see what the path is. Attack, yeah. yeah, I mean, his tech is actually better than Lawn Gnomes right now. It's it's really scary that he has such a tech advantage on Lawn Gnome already. Yeah, because at this point, it gets kind of sketchy if you don't also go Colossus or try to match at least some... Either get your own Star Stargate or get your own Colossus out. So if you don't try to match at least one of those tech paths, if you don't have either and you run together, you're at a big disadvantage. Yeah, I mean, the only advantage Lawn Gnome has right now is just his units. Um, his army size is definitely uh, a bit larger, but again, that, that gap's going to be closed and the tech is definitely it's still slowly, in the slowly already is closing. He's not macroing his advantage of an army supply. He's a couple here and there, but he's really not pushing the way he, he has been. Um, he's only added maybe 10 supply worth of troops, which isn't a lot as a Protoss. Meanwhile, Xeon has added almost 20. 15, maybe, yeah. I would say. 
and the important thing to note is that Zeon is going to have two Colossus on the field. He's getting a Twilight Council already, so it could be either Charge or, or, or some kind of play like that. I don't think he can really afford Archons right now, but I mean, it's one of those things where he's starting to get all the tech, all the pieces that he wants, whereas Lawn Gnome isn't doing that. Um, so he's gaining a lot more gateway units out, yes, and, and Zeon's army is primarily not gateway units. Yeah, and, uh, and the other thing, the other thing that Zeon's doing smartly enough is taking a quicker third. It looks like he's already smashed down those yeah. rocks. Yeah, he's going to continue to cut corners and really start chipping away at this lead, and he's going to find himself over uh, overall ahead here pretty soon. I mean, again, his expansion timing is going to be much faster than Gnome's here. Mm -hmm. And Gnome can't really attack. He doesn't have the tech. He can't really attack in a Colossus like this. Yeah, at, th at this point, without Charge or Blink, so anything to close the gap on those Colossus, uh, yeah, he can't. Now Now he's in a spot where he can now just cross his fingers and hope that his macro is better than his opponent's macro. Yeah, but I mean, it, you can't... It doesn't matter how fundamentally sound you are as a player. If you aren't cutting corners and your bro is, like the opponent you're playing against, is cutting corners and it's not punished, no matter what, you're going to lose the game. And I think that's the situation where Lawn Gnome is kind of setting him, himself up for. He's not getting the tech that Zeon currently has. Yeah, I mean, um, he's just starting his second... His class is halfway done. He's got his range just starting. Meanwhile, even if he goes up against equal number of Colossus, the other guy's got range. So Zeon's got that advantage. And, too. and Zeon's getting Archons. So, I mean, the, the upgrade advantage fight. is with Gnome, too. But yeah. that, that yeah. third getting up for, for Zeon is such a big thing in this game that needs to be punished. Yeah, and what's great here is that Zeon has a Zealot in the third of Lana. He knows there's no third there. Yeah. He does, however, he, he, and, he's, and he caught the proxy pile on, so there's that. So Gnome, again, can't be aggressive. Yeah, and based off what Gnome just saw, he has to say, oh, shit, that's a lot of stuff that I can't really attack right now. So instead of going, oh, my God, I did so well in that initial engagement, I mean, looking at the resources lost, yeah, he's still ahead, but it's not really relevant at this point because, again, right. Zeon has cut enough corners to where he's at least even, if not, ahead. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, at this point, you have to sort of, if you're Lawn Gnome, you're slapping your forehead being like, damn it, he has Archons and I don't. Damn, he's got more Colossus than I do. Crap, he's still out of those Void Rays. And, and Zeon is starting plus two. Armor is on the way for Gnome, but Armor doesn't really play much of a role in PvP. So, kind of an irrelevant upgrade. Yeah, um, I, I, yeah what happened Zeon, was he was late with his Twilight as well. He had to upgrade something, so he just went Armor. Fair enough, I guess. Even then, I mean, it, it could have been something else. It could have been, you know, a second robotics. But it just Armor is such a waste of money in PvP. Um, it's just it's something that you don't typically see. So. Now, now, right now, that Zealot's spotting that Zeon, that Lorem's trying to take a third, and he can't. Lorem's going to lose this probe to the Zealot. The Zealot's going to start hacking away at this at the pylon. Meanwhile, they're just breaking down the rocks. I mean, Lawn Gnome's, the information that Lawn Gnome has given away um, and Zeon has gained is actually, again, another advantage. Right. Uh, I, I mean, at this point, he is now behind. If you look at the economy, definitely behind. Zeon has 74 probes. That's, that's a scorb level number of probes. Probably too many for Protoss. Um, I, I would say build zero, zero more. That's it. Like, like yeah, he's, he's yeah. already over the edge. You're right. Like, that's that's a good amount, I guess. I mean, it's not crazy. It's not an 85, 90, but I mean... And, and, uh, and, again, and at this point... The... And at this point, Lawn Gnome is basically mined out in his main and has all of his probes mining off one mineral patch. So again, yeah, he's if, got you look at, if you look at the income, the amount of harvesters is not going to display the difference in income. The difference yeah. in income right now is huge. Yeah, it's gigantic. Yeah. Uh, Alright, so right now Zeon's starting to move out across the map. Um, he is now 10 supply ahead of Lawn Gnome. Um, army and, supply yeah. still, still behind on the army supply, but but clearly not where it counts. You know what I mean? That's yeah. Like, the composition is much 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 better for Zeon, and he has an upgrade advantage. Yeah. If you were to fight straight up right now, he would win. If you're just a move against each other. Now we have a stalker poke with two sentries across. Hey man, yeah. sentries not for anything at this point in the game, really. When you have so many massive units. Oh, no, um, no, but this is kind of funny in that the stalkers and sentries catch. The probe before it tries to build a fourth, so there's that. The players are even on supply right now, but Lando is going to get this push completely, completely smashed. And now Zeon is now maxed out. Uh, I would call it a push. And, well, right, uh, the poke, I should say. <laughs> uh, keywords. Um, yeah. Plus three, halfway done for no, for Zeon. At this point, Zeon can, can box a name of at least across the map. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Pile on there too. He's he had a good position to reinforce as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's got up all the pieces he really wants. He's got his archons. He's got his colossus. He's even got a couple of void rays just just because it's. Something else, yeah. Uh, I mean, with, with, if, I mean, if you get those Void Rays decently charged, those five Stalkers, if they don't immediately target them down, aren't going to be able to kill them. And actually, this fight might start right when Londoms Plus 2 finishes. So yes, there's no upgrade advantage, but there's a lot of a lot of Colossi for Zeon, and a lot of Archons doing a lot of damage to all this army. Yeah, those Archons are soaking up a lot of damage right now for uh, the rest of the army. Londo is... He has lost a lot of his army. The army supply tab telling the story right now where Zeon's going up. PvP, a classic case of was you know, more Colossus right now, and obviously the answer is Zeon. Uh, cleaning up that fight pretty hard, and I don't think that Londum's going to be able to stop this in any way. Yeah, Londum's fighting to the end right now because he knows this is this is point game for him, and he's going to clean up a couple of these Colossus. Meanwhile, there's another Colossus in a, in a small army of the Zealots trying to take down his, his natural right now. And the, the, the reinforcements are now coming in for Xeon, and, and he's now 100 supply up just about, 90 supply up just about. It doesn't look good for Lonum at all. Yeah, a valiant attempt here to try and hold, but this game is more or less over. Yeah, I mean, Lonum right now is trying to, trying to, start trying to uh, micro that Colossus, and that's going to get taken down. There's the GG well played from Xeon. Um, and Lonum loses the match, set the set 2-0 to um, Xeon, who... who Show two different two different skills in that game actually, and maybe we'll come back to that before we start the next set. But for now, guys, we're gonna take a quick break and uh, come back to us next. We're gonna have Zeon versus SMJ, another PVP.